All right, hello everyone. I wanted to make a video about drawing legs this time and I was kind of struggling to pick out which points about drawing the legs to focus on. Uh, so I just decided to pick two that I use consistently and that I keep in mind every time I draw the legs, every time. And then from here I can maybe branch out and focus on other aspects of drawing the legs at a later date. But for now, let's just jump right into two details to help you draw legs. So the first thing that I want to focus on here is the gesture of the leg. This is something that you've probably seen before if you've ever looked up how to draw the leg, and frankly you might be sick of seeing this piece of advice, but it's such a, a simple and direct way of visualizing the leg that it can be used for nearly every drawing of a leg that you make, uh, which is certainly the case for me. So starting with a side profile view of the leg, the idea here is that the leg is drawn with a curve at the front of the thigh, a straight line at the back of the thigh, another curve for the calf, and another straight line for the shin. Now this is essentially the basis of this technique, or this way of visualizing it. And so the gesture that this pattern creates is one of an S-curve that runs from the top of the thigh and goes across the knee and down to the ankle. And if I take just the gesture line alone, it already serves as a strong basis for being able to draw a leg by following just that gesture. So when drawing a leg from the front, you can see again that even from this angle, if you draw a gesture line throughout the length of the leg that leads to the widest points, you'll get an S-curve that, albeit doesn't look straight up like an S, but it follows a similar wavy motif. And again, kind of gives you the blueprint for how to recreate this specific leg. And the same thing applies here with a back view of the leg. This is something that's so ingrained into me now that it's something I'm able to do when quick sketching without even really having to think about it. And you can see in this example that even in a three-quarter view, the same rule applies. You got the straight lines for the back of the thigh and the shin, and curved lines for the front of the thigh and the calf. It's a visualization that I think is so bulletproof that even if I just place these lines first without drawing a leg to first identify them, that it just gives me the entire outline of a leg on their own, and all that's left from that point would be to fill in the blanks. Okay, so the second thing that I always keep in mind when drawing the legs is a muscle on the leg called the sartorius muscle, and it's this muscle right here. Now, the first thing I want you to take note of is where this muscle starts on the pelvis. You can see in this diagram that the origin point of this muscle is on the ilium of the pelvis, and more specifically, the anterior superior iliac spine, which on a real life reference would be this point right here, and in this photo, these two points right here. Which on a muscle diagram looks like this, and note again where this muscle starts on the pelvis. Now the second thing I want to point out is where this muscle ends, which is at this point at about the bottom of the knee, or in other words, right at the start of the tibia. And the last thing I want to point out is if you take these two points where the sartorius begins and connect them to each other, and then to the bottom of the crotch, you'll see that it gives us this triangular underwear sort of shape. Now with all that being said and moving on to using this information to draw the leg, here we have those two points on the pelvis where the sartorius begins, goes down to the crotch, and then connect to each other at the top, and we get that underwear shape. And then from those two points on the pelvis, I go down where I feel the knee is, and from there I've given myself enough information to fill out the rest of the leg around just those two lines. And then if we fill in the space between the sartorius and the underwear shape, it gives us the secondary triangular shape that acts as one of the main building blocks to simplifying the leg.
And in this example, you can see that even in a three quarter view, it's going to be the exact same process by placing the underwear shape, drawing two lines from the corners of that triangle to where I feel the knee would be and continuing on from the information that doing that gives me. I find that once I have those lines in place that it gives me a pretty good idea of how to place everything else sort of by proxy of where those lines were put down in the first place. And then by filling this out here, you can spot the the two triangle shapes that are that sit between the sartorius and the underwear triangle shape. And so with this information in the back of my mind, it's much easier for me to make out where all these connection points are going to be located on the body to be able to accurately connect the legs to the pelvis. You can see here that I've identified one point of the pelvis where the sartorius will connect. And if I draw a line across from that, I'll get the second point of that triangular shape. One thing to keep in mind too though is not to confuse the second point to this point on the hip right here. This would be incorrect. Remember that the second point is going to be a little over halfway across the whole body and it's going to go back to the widest part of the hip and that gives us the underwear shape that we're looking for. And then from this point, it's going to be the exact same process as the last two examples, essentially. And this is kind of why I pay so much attention to the sartorius muscle, because it's a muscle that connects the lower half of the body to the upper half of the body, which is something that can be very uh, confusing for beginner artists as well as giving me enough information to then draw out the rest of the leg as it relates to the placement of the sartorius. In this example, you can see how by just finding the placement of those two points of the pelvis, it just becomes kind of like a straight shot from there since I know that it connects to the knee and, and all of the rest, basically. And here we have the triangular shape that the sartorius creates as it goes from the pelvis down across the whole leg and to a connection point onto the knee. And so with that, ladies and gentlemen, those are two details to help you draw legs. Of course, like I said in the beginning, these aren't all the details about drawing the leg, uh, but these are just two in particular that I always account for when approaching drawing the legs in any pose. And like I said before, I can totally do another video talking about more details about drawing the legs since legs are a subject that can be very complicated simply in the amount of things that you may have to remember about connection points and rhythms and all that crap. But so we're going to cap things off with just one more example using all the information that I shared in this video. Thanks so much for watching as always and I'll talk to you on the next one.